right, hello everybody. This is Sensei Starman, and welcome to my first chapter of Let's Play Fallout London. Now, for those of you who hadn't heard about this, uh, this is a very ambitious mod put together by a group called Team Folon that decided to explore what the Fallout universe would be like in the ruins of London. Uh, all the Fallout games to date have been focused on America, you know, which makes sense as the game is a Cold War satire. But there have been enough references in the lore to what London is like for people to say, hey, you know, let's do a game. So for a couple of years now, I think uh, five if I remember correctly, they have been working to make this game that basically overwrites the uh, classic Fallout 4 architecture and built a virtual London. And I'm intending to play through it, so thank you for joining me on this journey. And let's go ahead and watch the opening movie. Now this may take a moment, and I have noticed uh, the load times on this are pretty long. Not as bad as when I played Fallout 4 on uh, my two computers ago system. I got a pretty high-end gaming rig now. Here we go. War. War never changes. Since the dawn of man, when tribes beat each other to death over necessities, the will to power has been the driving force of mankind. When the great fires of humanity's ambition ravaged the earth, it was not our doing. For the bloodiest chapter of human history had only begun. Britain was not spared the hellfire. And London, a monument to mankind's ambition, was returned to the state of nature. Those who emerged from the ashes did so from a network of underground bunkers known as Pindar stations. And so it was that the embers of civilization would ignite once again. Over a century later, through the military might of the Tommies, an aristocratic parliament continues to give orders but few are still listening. In the Tower Hamlets, the fifth column rises. Training drums beat and uniforms march, all in the name of their dear leader, Eve Varney. Across the Thames, in the pastures of Richmond, a great army gathers strength. Styled on the Camelot Knights of days past, they're headed once more unto the breach. For there are whispers of angels beneath this hallowed land, a curtain of illusion and intrigue, a puppeteer behind the scene. Only one thing is certain. Those who take the road to Westminster will be forever changed. Because in mankind's pursuit of power, there is no price too high, no life too valuable, and no ideal too sacred. Because war, war never changes. Mind the gap, mind the gap. Stand clear of the door, please. Okay, we get to select our char uh, character. I'm going to model him on me, so we'll do male. Subject has been performing adequately. No spikes in visuals. Nothing unusual. Perfectly usual. Quiet. Smythe will be pleased. How are they in appearance? 
of Burton. Perhaps we should take a closer examination. That sounds like Sylvester McCoy for Scientist One. Okay, so this is typical of the character design from Fallout 4. We get a couple of defaults to start with. You know, 15 faces that you can move from here. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to make him look a little younger. A bit more like me. So, extras. You can add on face tattoos, damage, blemishes, markings. You know, add forehead blemishes. Rough face. Cheek blemishes, mouth blemishes, cheek creases, eyes gaunt, skin sort, or, you know, sun scorched, rather, and spots. So yeah, you can do a fair bit to modify your character. I'm gonna make him a little bit on the larger side, less toward muscular. Maybe not that large. And then for the face, you can select the details. Get the hair to, let's see, warm black, jet black, jack black. <laughs> and the facial hair. And we'll go for a survivalist. Okay, and hairstyle. Maybe not beatnik, but garage band. Definitely fits. Uh, eyes, we can. Color. Sort of a brown and brown. I guess one of those should be dark brown, but it'll stick with that. And you can right click to see the profile. If you like trying to play around with the nose too much, and I can't imagine that you're too excited watching me try and mold this, but uh, that's good enough. Looks broadly like me, beard and long hair as I have now, so we'll go ahead and go with that. Confirm character. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have a chance to change it later if I feel like it. Excellent. A rapid progress is being made. That definitely sounds like Sylvester McCoy. Anomaly. Of course. Now, what about their physical and mental development? Okay, here is where we set our stats. You start with one point in everything. I usually max intelligence, call that pure ego. A little bit of charisma. You don't want to go too low on anything in this game. I'm good at sneaking around, so I'll put a little bit more in a stealth. And I've heard enough about this game to know I want to cheese strength a little bit. But I think I will bump luck up to... Actually, we'll go ahead and do agility to five. And we do have to type our name in here, so I'll type my real name. Oh, do not want the apostrophe in there. Okay, we'll accept that. If I hit R instead of E. Okay, and then you get to choose two traits, or you don't have to choose them. And we got some good starting trait here, Acrobat. Your figure allows for greater motion, but you gain 10% of your movement speed, but lose carrying capacity. 
Chemhead, you lose one to special when not under the influence, but you know how to make them last, quadrupling the effect. Clusterphobic, you have a fear of enclosed spaces, so you feel right at home in the open. You get plus one all your stats when outside, but suffer minus one indoors. Four eyes, you're not blind. You get plus one when you wear perception wearing glasses, but lose one without them. Gifted, you have more innate abilities than most, but struggle to improve them. You get plus one all your special with several 15% experience gained. Heavy handed, you swing harder but rarely exert yourself. Your melee and unarmed attacks do 20% more damage, but power attacks are meaningless. Hoarder, you get plus 75 pounds of your carrying capacity, but movement speed drops to zero when you're over encumbered. You regenerate your action points faster, but your reckless nature causes you to take more damage. That's going to be a no. And you have Night Owl, which, you know, plus one in one new intelligence and perception during the day, but you lose that at night. Numbskull, you get plus one in strength, endurance, and luck, but your intelligence can never go higher than three. Puritan, your body is a temple, plus one in strength and endurance. This is reversed if you drink alcohol or use chems, accepting anti-rad and healing stuff. Sleepwalker. Is it a gift or a curse? Who knows? You often find yourself waking up in strange places with no memory of how you got there. Uh, I'm going to take Gifted because plus one to all your abilities ain't nothing. And unfortunately, since we don't start off with glasses, I'm going to take Heavy Handed because from what I've heard, being able to do unarmed and melee is going to be very important in this game on account of there's a lot less guns. Gentlemen, I trust everything is going well. Tremendously so. In fact, it may be our best work yet. Good. The subject looks ready for conditioning. Within a week or so, we can wrap up phase one. Thank you, sir. I'll set phase one on autopilot. See that it's done. I'm getting a real prisoner vibe to this opening scene. Seems to be rousing a bit. Not to worry. Let's put them back under. Okay, well, apparently I just got put under. Okay, well, I got two radio signals, or it looked like I did, which is weird because I don't think I have a radio yet. Okay, now they do kind of presume that you already know the basic Fallout uh, commands at this point, because we don't get any prompts as to what we're supposed to do here. But the trick is, raise our fists, going into combat mode. We're going to start punching our way. And this does not hurt my fists at all. And we can scroll back, see that we're wearing prison togs of some type. Now, here's the weird part. I can't access inventory yet, but I can start grabbing all the gear off of the scientists. And we can start grabbing all the scientific stuff here because we're probably going to need to either sell stuff or construct stuff sooner or later. And there is a head in the jar that we cannot take. Stay in 
hide mode, because that way if something attacks us, we'll have some warning. Maybe be able to avoid it. Okay, so nothing in the lockers here. Okay, grab myself some coffee cups. And this is where those guys came in. Somewhere. machine gun turret. Looks like there was a firefight over there. And, uh, yeah, hard to see. But that is, in fact, a fire there. We cannot... Ooh. Yeah, we get hurt trying to get over that little ridge. So we're not going to do that. terminal here. Let's see. Thank you for playing our mod. Thank you to our Patreon and Ko-Fi supporters. Exclusive, ultimate fan, VIP, basic. I guess that's just the list of everybody who has helped to support the game. Which is a nice little touch. tools there. I think that's just shadow. I can't access my inventory to get anything that might heal me yet. Yeah, but now we're detected. Uh... So this door is accessible. You can see some type of lab animal in those cages there. Uh, 
Okay, welcome to Turing Computer. And we got the Rad Shrew release do reset door mechanisms. Let's see, unauthorized content, redacted. I have redacted and corrupted your file. Log entry one. The troopers have secured us a batch of the rad shrews for testing. I would have preferred working with rad rats, but it seems they were chased off by their counterparts. Judging by the size of the rad shrews in the London Bridge station, I don't entirely blame them. Testing on the captured rad shrews is going well. Multiple have died, but the remaining ones are stronger than ever. I'm especially proud of the one we affectionately refer to as Big Dave. I'm going to move on to the next stage of development, which will introduce more vitamins into their diet. We'll also simultaneously reduce their feed to see how they cope. I predict a lot of them will die, so we better get the nets ready to capture some more. Smythe should be content with the results. Progress has been made and exciting new things have been discovered. Not only did the Rad Shrews surpass expectations, but some of the results co uh, correlated with our prize subjects next door. Utterly fabulous to see all coming together. With any luck, Smythe will visit the laboratory soon and see our progress. And finally, the Rad Shrew. A small carnivorous mammal, the Rad Shrew seems to have mutated from the much smaller counterpart, the Common Shrew. Unlike the Common Shrew, which is insectivorous, its evolution along the food chain now permits it to hunt much larger prey. The Rad Shrew has tiny eyes and a large nose, giving it a keen sense of smell. Rad Shrews shuffle through the undergrowth for their prey, and can be found in most habitats but prefer dirt flooring, woodland, and grassland. Active by day and night, they are very territorial and aggressive for their size, and can sometimes be heard fighting their high-pitched squeaks, particularly noticeable during the summer. Yeah, have you ever seen the movie Killer Shrews? And bingo! Now the action music is still playing, indicating that there is something nearby that is hostile toward us. But we are now hidden. Meaning there is nothing here wanting to eat us at the moment. But hey, we have just survived our first combat. Punching giant radioactive shrews to death. And we just got some ammo out of that box. Amazingly, the test tube stand even after I take away the rack. Okay, well we now we have a new goal, pick up the device. And it does highlight to show us which device they're referring to, because it looks like we got a Pip-Boy Mark IV, a Pip-Boy Mark IV. But what we're actually looking at right here is just the device.
right. So now we've got escape the facility. We have a map of our immediate surroundings. Mysterious lab. We have radio. This is the British Broadcast Ministry. I'm Bradley Fortworth, your host and guide through the wonderful world of classical music. Welcome to the program. Let's begin. All right. Well, we'll listen to the rest of those later. Right now, you can see, got all my stats boosted to four minimum. Got our perks. Inventory, no weapons as such, but we can change our apparel. Not sure if this is any more protective. Let's see, this increases intelligence and perception, but lowers charisma. And beyond that, we've got a ton of junk and a wee bit of ammo. And we also now have a utility belt. Looks like we got a fair bit about data mining. Looks like it explains how the VATS works. Appears to be the way out, so I'm going to go ahead and quick save here. And next time we will continue exploring this weird underground facility and try and find a way out. But thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment if you are so inclined, and we'll continue the adventure from here next time. Take care until then.